This is Twit. Price tag isn't small. It's physically a large chip. I don't think it's quite quite as big as a Threadripper. I have not had one in my hands yet. But I, I had been looking at the day one reviews posted yesterday at, at outlets like Gamers Nexus and Steve over there published a review. And going through the charts here and looking at performance with this thing, just so you know, this okay. is a 28 core, so 56 thread uh, processor with the, the TDP to give you an idea of what kind of performance they're pushing out of this thing is 200 and 55 watts and it it can turbo up to 4.3 gigahertz and this is an unlocked processor too so just imagine what kind of uh cooling solution well there's actually a custom cooling solution to develop with uh ace attack that's available but the the performance of this thing and i'm thinking okay 28 watts or 28 cores excuse me uh well we already have like a 32 core Threadripper. So how can this compare? Well, we're looking at things that are, you know, more single thread optimized and especially Adobe uh, Creative Suite. Like if you look at Adobe, like Premiere Pro CC 2019, mm -hmm. he has a benchmark here and it's very impressive performance. We're talking about double the performance, like half the rendering time compared to that Threadripper, the 2990WX. So even with that price tag, even with the, you know, it's just kind of ridiculous specs and everything else that goes along with this. And I'm sure the total cost of ownership of this is not going to be low because this is only being offered currently to system integrators. So this is going to be like you'll, you'll find it from places that are offering pre-built high end workstations. But right. to get... This level of performance, especially if you live inside of Adobe CC, if you dependent dependent on workload, of course, because there are certain workloads where you just want more cores, and that's where Threadripper has a huge advantage. Because we're talking like the high end Threadripper part is only like seventeen hundred and twenty nine dollars when I looked last night on Amazon. So, you know, this that's this is almost twice as much money, and we don't even know what motherboard. Pricing will be like, and there's only one cooler so far that's even designed to work with this new uh, platform, which it itself is four hundred dollars at retail. So this is not cheap, but it it really comes right. down to like how much, how valuable is your time, and if the workload makes sense, then this starts to look really attractive. I know that Steve over at Gamers Nexus, his conclusion kind of ended with, uh, if he can find the budget for it, he wants one of these for their work because of what it would do to speed up their rendering times and that sort of thing. So it's just a big, you know, extreme high performance monstrosity of a workstation processor. And I just, I find this kind of stuff fascinating. Like I, where some people might be like turned off by like the TDP. I'm just like, whoa, 255 watts from a CPU. That's like, that's like a GPU. <laughs> Imagine the coolers. I know. The cooler is really impressive. Uh, I did a news post for this last night, but I, I was looking at the Ace Tech website. And that is a thick uh, radiator. I don't think I've ever seen a bigger one outside of like, a you know, a vehicle. But although, you know, you could because probably we've gone down that road before in the past. I'm sure, you know, car radiators. I, I used cool. a car radiator attached to a liquid <laughs> cooler. Um it was very stable. <laughs> and if you if you you buy one with an integrated electric fan and you run the electric fan at five volts off the power supply, uh, it runs slowly enough that it doesn't drive everybody in the room with you insane, uh, which was the big kind of takeaway from that build. But, you know, if you put several gallons of liquid uh, at the time, I don't remember the exact wattage of the processor in question, but it was like around the Core i7-920 era. Um, so 150 watts is not out of the question. But uh, the, uh, you know, it turns out if you have a lot of water, it's much easier to keep your CPU cool. <laughs> that's, that's the big thing, too. Like, forget about, you know, there's a lot of, like, the, the fan size, the size of the radiator. Really, a lot of these closed-loop uh, all-in-one solutions, and I've tested quite a few of them over the last few years, 
that's really the thing. Like you don't have very much liquid. It's a very small loop. And some of these are even smaller than others, like the, the smaller form yeah. factor solutions that just don't have any cable length. They're, they're, and they have a smaller radiator, especially like a 120 or even 240. At some point, you reach this this temperature to the liquid itself. It can no longer be effectively cooled going through the radiator, and then you're in trouble. So this this clearly has the capacity to cool. I mean, the cooler itself can handle 500 watts. So there there's some headroom there for some overclocking. If you fancy overclocking your $3,000 workstation processor, and by the way, the $3,000 price tag is if you buy 1,000 units. So who knows what it would be if it was offered to the public. I would assume probably a little north of Several that. dollars more. Yeah, just a few dollars more. 